Hey everybody, call me Felix. And what if I told you there's a Sunday brunch in Metro Manila where for 5,000 pesos per person or 100 US dollars, you can enjoy not only a never-ending champagne, but all you can eat of the following items. Cold seafood towers full of fruits of the sea on ice, as in fresh shucked oysters, steamed lobster, kuracha, blue crab, poached prawns, mussels, and whelks. And if you don't like cold seafood, not to worry. There are hot seafood towers with oysters Rockefeller, baked Boston lobster with cheese, grilled prawns, herb baked mussels, as well as warm kuracha and blue crab. Now you're thinking, sold on the idea of unlimited and hot and cold seafood towers, right? But wait, there's more. A whole lot more good stuff indeed. There's octopus carpaccio, smoked salmon, foie gras terrine, eggs benedict, green duck, duck ravioli, four cheese gnocchi, asparagus, and mushroom risotto, Jasper cooked USDA ribeye, USDA filet mignon, Pacific sea bass, brioche lobster roll, a slew of family style Italian desserts, and a station for affogato, frozen instantly with ni liquid nitrogen. That was all of the food we got to try on this Sunday brunch menu, but there were other glorious items we couldn't fit in, such as lobster thermidor, scrambled eggs and truffles, potato hash salmon, braised beef cheek, and made-to-order Roman-style pizzas. Somehow, someway, you can fit all these Sunday brunch premium items in one sitting for just 5,000 pesos per person, which is in effect the fanciest Sunday brunch buffet in Metro Manila. This wonderful all-you-can-eat Sunday brunch can be found at the Finestra Italian Steakhouse inside the Solaire Resort and Casino in Paranaque, the part of Entertainment City that aspires to be the Las Vegas of Metro Manila. And the Solaire in particular is known for its fantastic ensemble of upscale restaurants that rank well up high on certain online publications lists such as Tatler Asia and TripAdvisors as the highest rated foodie destinations in the metro. Hopefully we get to try a few more of Solaire's brilliant lineup of restaurants in the near future. For now, we'll relish our time at Finestra Italian Steakhouse, which as the name infers is a steakhouse with Italian flair and culinary predilections, sporting some very tasty quality cuts of steak, ranging from US Snake River Farms Wagyu to Japanese Omi Wagyu. You can also find classic Italian dishes there, su such as fresh made pasta and pizza to osobuco. And what's a steakhouse without fresh seafood on ice? Needless to say, if you come to Finestra, you'll have to defenestrate your budget, as in throw it out the window. You'll probably spend 30,000 pesos on a dinner for two. However, from time to time, Finestra holds a Sunday brunch, in which for 5,000 pesos per person, you can order the entire menu, all you can eat for one flat price, unless you like putting Ossietra caviar in your cappuccino and the price rockets some more. To me, Finestra's Sunday brunch is one of the greatest values in fine dining in Metro Manila, with some high quality offerings freshly made to order. So you get quality and value here. Not to mention the extraordinary ambiance of the dining room, in which you get the impression you're dining in a lakeside palazzo with a lakeside view, except it's Manila Bay once you get past the horizon of the well-manicured yard at the forefront of your view, with an open kitchen and a jazz band whipping up some smooth tunes, and you'll hear plenty of those tunes in the background with a good dosage of the saxophone. Well. There's a huge parade of food we ordered, and like I said, we had to omit some items, as our stomachs allowed, but we'd have to say we could have gone a longer way if it wasn't for a very delicious mistake we made in ordering. Keep watching to see what that mistake was, and for all the food to the end, you don't want to miss it. So let's go defenestrate ourselves on to Finestra Sunday Brunch. All right, I see Food Towers arrived as the first course. Ooh la la, everybody. Fresh oysters. I'm gonna get that one first. Just gonna do just a very quick hit of lemon here. That's it. That's all you need. Hmm. And away we go. That's some juicy briny oyster right there. Beautiful. And I'm gonna get me one with um, cocktail sauce. They have some Tabasco here, so you can request it. It's gonna be awesome. What is this? That is called um, raspberry mignonette. Oh, is it good for oyster or no? Uh, you can put it on all your cold seafood. Okay, I'm gonna put some Tabasco on my oyster. Hit it up with a lemon again. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. 
There we go. A little bit of spice, a little more zing. Really lifts that really fresh oyster. Mmm, really good. Come on, more. More. Warren's still not used to eating oysters. Yeah. But what do you say? Is it good? Here, try this. Uh, the snail. Oh, the whelp. How is the whelp? I'm just about to try it. I need to put it in sauce. Okay. Thank you. Here is a whelp. And then I'm going to put a little bit I'm gonna hit it with Tabasco, we're gonna hit it with some horseradish instead. I can go with anything. Yeah, okay. Hit with that. Just gently. So that horseradish, I think. Oh my god, what? What happened? You really like these oysters? You finally like oysters, oh my god. Wait, is it fresh? Not of course it is yeah, fresh! I don't, I don't like okay, I'm gonna hit that fresh. up with a bit of Tabasco. Yeah, well. There we go. Those whelks are really sweet. Plum. Mm. Okay, muscle time. Just a little bit of citrus. Oi. Oi. A bit of Tabasco. Why am I hitting everything with Tabasco? It's not even a provided sauce. There we go. Wow. That's a muscular muscle. Thick. I'm not gonna get a short change there. Oh, what is this? Lobster. I know that. It's the top. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Lobster. There we go. A little bit of lemon. A little bit of lemon. I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna get some Tabasco. I'm always saying Tabasco. Maybe I should get try some of the other sauces. I'm gonna try and get this sauce here. Oh. So this is some steamed lobster we got. A bit more of that. There. There we go. Mm, some of that tomli as well. Can, can we, like, can we, if we have a leftover, can we, like... <laughs> take out? No. They, I don't do, think so. Do they allow take out here? Warren, you gotta pace yourself. I'm telling you, right now. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the bites. Eat it slow. For crying out loud, That's Warren. Pace yourself. What else haven't I tried? I haven't tried... One of these. Prawns. Hmm. Okay. Dip in some of that horseradish. That's a great color, great combination. Head butter and that horseradish mayo. Okay, some of that head butter. Oh my goodness, so lush. Okay. Big fat prawn taking a swim in the horseradish here. Okay. Really love that firm, sweet steamed shrimp. And with this. Horseradish, really good, really creamy. Okay, what I have here is the kuracha. These other, I forget what type of crab, what they call it. The other, what's the technical term for this type of crab, but, eh. Looks like a lot of good stuff for that orange. Tomley. Try that out. It's a little eggy. And then there's that nice, gentle um, taste of the sea. And then see that crab dense but falling apart. I just have to call special attention to how big these prawns are. Huge. So I think the seafood tower, the cold one, a must order. I actually give you this by default. But yeah, look at that thing. Put it with all that horseradish sauce. Yeah, you know, big swim. Perfect. Mm -mm. Firm, muscular, and sweet. That's exactly what you want in your prawn. Mm. Now the bread I have not had yet. This is such a beautiful bread basket. And they give you some olive oil to dip in. That is good. I like to have it. Okay, you to be very careful with this, everybody. Mm. Got some of this puffy bread. 
for us to follow that up. Mmm. Hello. There's some sun-dried tomato in here. It's a nice bit of cherry tomato inside. Mmm. Then with some basil rum. Or actually, there's some oregano and tomato in this bread. Mmm. Okay. I think there was a serious misunderstanding here. Because I have not one, not two, but three hot seafood towers. Um, yeah. I don't know, guys. <laughs> what did I get myself into, bed? I don't know, man, but... Oh, one for me, one for you, everybody. Okay. Yeah, favorite. I know we get one each. No, it was, only got one for the table. <laughs> <laughs> what grabs me the most is cheese lobster. Oh my gosh. This is nuts. Oh, I still got here. Okay, this is nuts. You got cheese lobster. I need a platter. Here we go. He's gonna do it by hand. Like certain things here. Okay. Big old crusty layer of cheese. Hey, pull some of that lobster out. Okay, and then eat this all together. Cheese layer with that lobster. Mm, okay, now as you can tell, that cheese kind of has been sitting out a little bit more. It's not exactly as piping hot as I'd like it, but... Mm. But yeah. Still satisfying, um, but cheese is a, mm, a little bit harder. Well, go ahead, Warren. Is Christmas, that's your Christmas gift. That's yours, yeah, that's your ribeye. Yeah, put that there. I want you. To, I want to get you eating some of that ribeye steak. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's not rare. It was well cooked, I think. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He never knows. <laughs> well, he said, "Wow." Dozeness, <laughs> tender. Uh oh. Was smooth. Mhm. Mm you must try, sir. Well, we're gonna get to that. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. We'll get, we'll get, I'll get to the steak. This cheese is really good quality. Only thing is, just like, uh, sitting out for a little too long. You wanna try some of those razor clams up next? Clams are good. Razor clams. Oh, the razor is the long ones, right? No, because this is the shape of the clam, it's all rectangular like a razor. Really like that meat, just like firm. And then you have this, um... I'm gonna put this with some bright cherry tomato. That firm... Razor clam meat. It's a shame it's not quite as warm, this hot tower, than the cold tower. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, you said this is a hot tower, but it doesn't really feel that much warmer. Hmm. Not anymore. Not anymore. It's been sitting out for a little bit. Here's some mussels and some pesto breadcrumbs, I think. Herb baked mussels. What on earth? Okay. Some herb baked mussels. I like that crunch from the pesto breadcrumbs. What else are we gonna get to? Hmm. So much. Ooh, oysters Rockefeller. Now, unfortunately, I didn't see these again. So, once again, this is a. a so, you can see that it's adequately warm, the cheese with the oyster, but, ah, I think it's been sitting out for a bit long. Oysters Rockefeller are good. The only thing is, again, needs to be eaten within the first minute or two. And this was sitting out for a little bit. I really love these shrimp, though. This one is grilled. 
Okay, peeled my shrimp here. This grilled shrimp. Look at that head butter there. Mm. When you get a little more of that char grilling with that head butter. And then this big, big prawn. Firm muscular So, But I think the way to go is the ice one on the shrimp to fully enjoy it. These little blue crabs are really succulent though. Good chunky meat from that crab fat. Really decadent. So highlights of the seafood hot tower. Everything was really good, um, I think though. Because certain items were a little cooling off a bit. Especially those cheese lobsters and the cheese oysters. Uh, get yourself an ice one. Personally, that's my favorite of the two. You'd say the ice one's your favorite, right? Yeah. Ice tower. Yeah, get the ice tower. Don't, don't order multiples by mistake like we did. Okay, I'm gonna go help myself to some smoked salmon. There's some capers, there's some lemon, there's some parsley and some cream fresh. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get me a filet of this. Smoked salmon, looks really good. It's really fresh, appetizing, like so. This smoked salmon is lovely. It's got good thickness, for one. Just a gentle smoking flavor. And a creme fresh. Parsley and capers, liven up some more. Oh yeah. Ooh, foie gras. Mm, ooh la la. Well, that's calling my name because I love foie gras. You love foie gras? Yeah, oh. I love foie gras. Why don't you get your own? <laughs> Here, Warren, have some. <laughs> Let me know what you think. <laughs> yeah, I have the, some of that. Delicious, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Fresh, huh? Yeah, but it's smoked salmon. Just a light smoke. Yeah. So here we go. We have some foie gras terrine with uh, what's this? Be some brioche toast, and then there's some Quincy jam and some dehydrated pear. I think the way to eat this is to put it on the brioche. For the jam. All right, so I'm gonna eat the foie gras terrine this way. Kind of on this brioche toast with that jam and dehydrated pear on top. There we go. Wow, that foie gras terrine is awesome. Look at that cr creaminess. And then that duck liver flavors that duck liver flavor and just really smooth and nothing like that's too gamey about it and that jam really adds some really good refined sweetness it's great great taste sensation with that brioche toast duck ravioli ooh duck ravioli ooh la la okay I'm gonna finish this mmm Heavenly. It's just a, like a smooth mousse. Kind of tastes a little bit like um, creamy and cheesy. And yet, so savory. But not um, overly gamey or over the top with that, you know, livery taste. It's so good. Hey. Thank you. How about lobster roll? Lobster roll. Yeah, you can put that in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yoki pasta. Mm hmm. Should I put it there? Thank you. Okay. I really like the serving size that they're really small so you can try every single thing. Right, Warren? Save some room! Okay, I'm gonna cheat and have a duck fat fried potato for my filet mignon. Perfectly crisp on the outside. Moist inside. 
Mm. With that extra comforting touch. The duck back. Mm. Love it. I'm gonna stick to the lighter fare still. Here's some thinly sliced octopus carpaccio with some tomato and some basil and some dill and some olives. Ooh, it's a bit dainty, but there we go. Wow. That is so good. The octopus, very fresh. Hardly any aftertaste there. And that basil, the tomato, the olives. Really quite a symphony of fresh garden flavors. Mm. Definitely a must order. I'm going to try this duck ravioli. Some green duck ravioli. There we go. What I'm getting more of is the cheese, which is so luscious. The right amount of saltiness, too. Let me show you what's inside here with that duck. That duck, generally, it's kind of like it's muted. But at the finish, you get more of that, you know, duck savoriness, that little bit of that saltiness from the duck. Really lovely. Yeah, there's quite of a meaty backbone at the end. So even though you get a lot of the cheese at the front, the end is like that beautiful, like minced duck consistency, minced duck taste. It's been a while since I've had eggs Benedict. It's a beautifully poached egg. Ooh, beautiful. Ooh, risotto. Mm. <clears throat> this one has toasted for carb. This one has some toasted focaccia as the base with some parma ham and this lovely poached egg. Beautiful crunch of that focaccia. With a nice little herbal kick there. Some of that egg. Mm. Lovely. Simple and so good. And some of that parma ham. It's really, as simple as this is, this really tastes luxurious. Like coats of the tongue, that beautiful egg and hollandaise sauce. Saltiness from that Parma ham. Pissed up a little bit too. And that bread is also lovely. The texture. Crun bit crunchy, bit moist inside. And good herbal flavor running throughout. All right, it's a bit unconventional <clears throat> to go for steak with several other courses to try. But, you know, hot steak doesn't really wait for anybody. And tender filet mignon. Here's our filet. Try it out. Oh, man. I don't think you need to chew this at all. That's really rich. I forgot to specify the doneness. That's a really good medium to medium rare. Yeah, all about that steak. No, nothing else. Got some, get some green beans in. Nice snappy green beans. Soaked in that sauce. With some onion in there. Mm. Next up, I got some gnocchi with four cheese gnocchi with honey and walnuts. Ooh, it's not be like honey walnut shrimp. No, it's not. Um, there you go. I think that's like the right proportion to cheese to the dumplings. Um, the honey walnut's a nice touch. Adds a bit of accentuating sweetness. Okay, here's some asparagus mushroom risotto. That's about perfect, really. Mushroom, I really love that texture. Want some meatiness there. 
The grains are about perfectly cooked. Nice consistency with the cheese. It's really good. Okay, I still have some more savory portions to try, but I'm hitting the palate wall. I need something to refresh it with. I'm gonna try this. I think this is the mango and passion fruit semi fried though. And there we go. It's, it's really dense. And it's got this outside layer that's crispy, full of mango flavor. And so once you burst into that layer, there's some chocolate bits in the bottom. Hmm. Try that out. And then there's that little passion fruit sourness that comes in at the middle of the tongue. It's really nice. I was about to say, this was kind of decadent until you got that part. Really nice. I need to try out our sea bass. This Pacific sea bass filet with some vegetables here. Ooh, flaky. And that crispy bit there. That crispy skin. The sea bass is really flaky. And then, nice crispy layer here. Quite moist. And then, nice supporting vegetables here too. Okay, last of the savory stuff. It's this lobster roll. And this brioche. And I have lobster thermidor and they have lobster. But I had so much of that cheese lobster. I'm like, that's ah, the lobster roll for me. Okay, here you go. That's a fresh lobster. But I think there's a little too much of the mayo. And then... It feels like with all the aromatics, it's getting like a green tea kind of taste. Kind of strange. Considering this is like an Italian take on a lobster roll. Okay, I got some affogato. They have this really cool show with the... Making the ice cream out of liquid hydrogen. You can get vanilla and chocolate. Vanilla or chocolate as a base. I chose vanilla. That's some caramel, and then there's some some alcoholic jam under here, or some cocoa jam, and then I top it off with a looks like a boysenberry to me, and then some whipped cream, chocolate pieces, and brownie pieces. So let's give this a good stir. Yes, please. Let me try it now that I've stirred up a little bit. I'm gonna get a 
big piece of berry there. Okay, there we go. That was very creamy. The caramel, not too sweet. Kind of brings it all together. There's dark chocolate buttons too. Not too sweet, very satisfying though. And then have some of that berry that cuts into everything. It's really creamy, really good, and still pretty light. Okay, so everything you see with the desserts, you get everything. So <laughs> you don't have to choose one or the other. Of course, you have to get your own ice cream. Anyway, I think I want some tiramisu. Cross this one off the list. Love that espresso flavor. Very pronounced. Um, there's lady fingers underneath. Kind of feel silky, buttery. And then that mascarpone cream is also coming in kind of. Um, I don't think it's as full body as I like it, but um, no, it's also really creamy. This is the mixed berries. Mixed berries. Zabaglione. Yeah. Mixed berries. So this is a, a lunch of whipped cream. Unless Warren tore into this thing and all I got are sloppy seconds. Maybe that's what this is. Okay. But basically, some really plump fruits in some whipped cream. Simple, but works. This really small number is lemon meringue cheesecake. Let's see here. It almost feels like it's got some marshmallow cream and a burnt on top. What it looks like. There you go. Now it's bursting with lemon meringue with a nice sugary backbone. Okay, here's some vanilla panna cotta. Some looks like some berries here too. There you go. Oh, it looks like some cherries actually. Cherries and panna cotta. There you go. Really like that. Those cherries, almost like it has a dark cola balsamic vinegar taste. Now, panna cotta is about the right sweetness, a good texture. Or jiggling, as you can see there. Then, last but not least, this is the chocolate sukoto cake. There you go. I would say it's like the tiramisu in a bit. But more of like a German chocolate flavor and added creaminess. Mm. But for me, I really love the ice cream the most. Refreshing, light, creamy, very satisfying. Okay, Sunday brunch here at Finestra at Solaire is over. And we're just chilling out, blissed out from a very delicious meal. Warren, what do you think of all this? All, all the food here, here is so good. You know, they're professionals when it mm -hmm. comes to cooking. Yeah, of course, because we have a luxury hotel, right? Mm -hmm. And I really like their serving. Mm -hmm. There's a big portion, mm -hmm. but you can taste like there's a lot of fresh seafoods. Yeah. Don't forget the steak. And the steak too, wow. That was the tenderness, like juiciness. Mm -hmm. Then it was not like tough mm -hmm. and it was smooth. Mm -hmm. You swallow it. Yeah. But what like do you think the about the over but what do you think about the overall experience? Sorry, sir? The overall experience. Like this ambiance yeah, being here. The musical band. Oh my yeah, gosh. the jazz. <laughs> That's our band. He was falling asleep because of the food and look at him. Very pensive. Looking out through Manila Bay. It almost makes you feel like you're in Europe. Especially with this cold Cloudy weather. Yeah, and they give you a champagne. But I didn't finish it because I'm already full. Never but ending I'll champagne, try. yeah. 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 And then and then the water is important too. Look. Okay, Warren's just getting all to the finer details. Let me put it to you in a very concise package. Sunday brunch. This probably is the best Sunday brunch in Manila. So Long before, it was always about Spiral Buffet. But I think for all the quality, for 5,000 pesos per person, is amazing. 
Yeah, it's amazing. You get as many seafood towers as you like, even the ones you mistakenly order. We had four seafood towers, man. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was only two. <laughs> yeah, we the wind up one getting one, one per person. What on earth? Yeah, amazing one. value. But if you come here, get a cold seafood tower. Hot one is good, but the cold one is the better one. Yeah, the cold one is the better one. By far. And then, the one thing we didn't get to try was pizza. pizza. But, yeah, they have pizza on the here. Oh. But, tried some great egg dishes, we tried some great pasta, some great rice dishes, and some foie gras. I love foie gras. All the steak you can eat too. And then, amazing ice cream, amazing desserts. There you go. So, we did leave behind some food, unfortunately. Some risotto, because it was getting too much, too rich. That lobster roll is kind of the only miss for me. I don't really like that it tastes like green tea a little bit and too much mayo over the lobster. But everything else, really, really great. This is one of the better. Oh, shit. Mm. We ate it just like three hours. Yeah. We just went by it quick, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of the more stellar dining experiences in Metro Manila. I think is dethroned Spiral as, personally for me, the best Sunday brunch buffet experience in Metro Manila. Oh, Ben, can you give us a spiel to close this out? No? No. Alright. <laughs> Alright, guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and better yet subscribe. See you in Barakai. Yeah, Barakai, it's tomorrow. Can you believe that? Yeah. You look at me. You look at you. Alright. We have more food and travel adventures to come, so. Keep cool, but care. Remember, the empire never ended.